Hello and welcome to Connect with Rohan Dialvis, brought to you by Satyajit Creations in London. We are in the west end of London today, near the well-known Hyde Park. A stone's throw away from Hyde Park is Hyde Park Gardens. We are today in a magnificent building, and for those who are interested in architecture, buildings in Hyde Park Gardens are listed under the National Heritage for England for its unique architecture and the decor. This beautiful building is in fact owned by Sri Lanka since the late 1930s. So there is no price for guessing where I am. I'm at the Sri Lankan High Commission and of course I will be meeting the High Commission. The top diplomat representing Sri Lanka here in London is a charismatic young lady, a career diplomat, I think about almost 25 years in service, and she has served many countries on behalf of Sri Lanka. She has been the High Commissioner to the United Kingdom since 2020. Formally, on record, the appointment from Sri Lanka is to the Court of St. James's. It's with great pleasure that I welcome Her Excellency, the High Commissioner, Saroja Sirisena. Connect to Rohan Dialvis, I warmly welcome you to this program, High Commissioner. Thank you. Thank you, Rohan. Okay, so it's been uh, good to have you on this discussion today. And uh, I have a number of questions planned for you. Hopefully, uh, we will uh, be able to look at various aspects of uh, uh, what you do and uh, what the High Commission does, etc. But before I get there, I would like to know uh, your, uh, from where you started, where your parents are, childhood, from that point onwards to the entry to the Sri Lanka Foreign Service. Well, I was born in Colombo. Mm -hmm. uh, my parents are medical doctors. Yeah. And uh, significantly, I spent my first uh, education in, in the United Kingdom. I came to, to the United Kingdom when I was about four, four years old, and uh, we stayed, my parents did their training, medi postgrad medical training in the UK, and we, uh, I returned to Sri Lanka when I was about seven. And, uh, so you, you had three years of your early life in London. Were yes. you in London or outside we of London? We were in London, just outside. First, we were in a place called Hayes. Oh, Middlesex. Uh, Hayes yes. in Middlesex, yes. right. My, my father worked at the Hillingdon Hospital. I see. And my mom did locums also around that area. So your parents are both doctors? Both medical doctors, right, yes. Right. yes. In fact, a number of people in my family are med in the medical profession. I see. Yes. Um, oh, well done. So four years to seven years of age, you were here in London. And then X number of years later, you're representing Sri Lanka at its uh, head and representative in the UK. Yes. Well done. So, from, so you went back to Sri Lanka yes. as, as a family. Yes. And then you started school there? I was at, I was at Srimal Bandar Naika Primary School. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I was at Devi Balika Vidyale after the year five scholarship until my O levels. Mm -hmm. I see. Uh, and then you, what made you join or apply to join the Sri Lanka Foreign Service because it's, it's a specialized area. Yes. It's not like this is Sri Lanka Administrative Service. A lot of graduates, etc., yes. they, they uh, uh, go for the competitive examination. Yeah. But the Foreign Service has very small, much smaller numbers than the Administrative yes. Service. So um, just to continue from what I said after my O-levels, I went to Australia. Uh, and uh, I did my uh, university entrance and I studied at the University of Melbourne. I studied politics, international relations, oh, right. uh, international political economy yeah. and French. I see. Because oh. at that, somewhere around that, that time I thought I would like to become a diplomat. So that's where my education led me and I sat the Foreign, Sri Lanka Foreign Service exam in 1997 mm -hmm. to enter the Foreign Service in 1998. And that's a competitive examination? Yes, it's held by the, uh, the Department of Examinations, it's a public exam, mm -hmm. and uh, we are at present less than 200 Foreign Service officers mm. in the Sri mm. Lanka Foreign Service. Now the reason I asked about the Foreign Service and uh, how one enters, uh, it's, it's a small and specialised service within Sri Lanka, yes. but it plays a very significant role 
outside the shores of Sri Lanka, uh, representing as well as uh, promoting as well as defending the country. Uh, so uh, this is a program sometimes uh, uh, an area that I even advise second generation Sri Lankans of British or other British Sri Lankans uh, of joining not just the public service but also there are other specialized areas within the public service, yes. so like the foreign service here. Yes. Um, what advice and encouragement can, give you, can you give a, a, a boy or a girl who is 16 or 17 years of age back home in Sri Lanka uh, of thinking of joining the foreign service and a career as well within the foreign service? Well, I think it's, for me at least, it's mm. the most exciting thing I, I could think of. It's, it's a challenging job it's, and it gives you so much satisfaction mm. because you are, at the end of the day, you are representing your country. It's not just traveling abroad or living abroad. You are living and traveling to represent your country. You carry your flag on your back. Mm. Absolutely. So. So after you joined the Foreign Service, and I'm not talking specifically of you, but somebody, a new entrant to the Foreign Service, uh, he or she has to uh, both serve in, in Sri Lanka as well as abroad yes. in various missions? Yes. Um, you, you serve periodically in the Foreign Ministry and overseas missions, hmm. um, depending on your area of expertise or your language. Uh, in my case, it was French. Mm. My foreign language was French because I studied French before I entered the Foreign Service. So then I um, was posted in France. And, I see. Yeah, I, so see. I already had possessed the language skill. And, uh, and so, so I think, I mean, most of our colleagues have um, foreign languages, Chinese and Japanese, Spanish, German, Hindi, Arabic, Russian. So, so it's, it's a multilingual service. Well, uh, yes. Within the members themselves. They yes, the because, because um, it's, it's always an advantage to speak the language of the country mm. and to know a little bit uh, or a lot about the country that you're serving in because mm. you need to have background, you need to have uh, understanding of the culture because that helps in, in conducting business on behalf of your country. Mm. That's impressive. I mean, it's very important to know and I'm very pleased to hear it from the top person of Sri Lanka based in the UK uh, in relation to the foreign service and especially for the younger generation who may want to think of a career and uh, the future in uh, the Sri Lankan foreign service. Coming back to the UK, uh, as the head of the mission here, which is uh, a designation of High Commissioner, uh, would, could you tell us the difference or the distinction between a, the rank of High Commissioner and an Ambassador? The, Rohan, the ambass uh, High Commissioner is an ambassador between Commonwealth countries. I see. See, originally when the Commonwealth was set up, most of the uh, members were, they were part of the British Empire and they, you yeah. couldn't send an ambassador mm. to your own head of state. Right, right. So then they were called High Commissioners. Right. And since... Uh, most of the countries of the British Empire, former British Empire, yeah. and some others now who are not part of that mm. culture, the shared history, mm. have become chosen to become members of the Commonwealth. They, they chose to remain as High Commissioners. So all the representatives within the Commonwealth of countries sent from Sri Lanka are High Commissioners, I believe. Uh, Say, yeah, for example, to, Uganda or India that's and, right, and Pakistan. That's right. That's so right. They're not and ambassador. between each other as well. So between each between other as well. Each other. So uh, the Commonwealth countries to the United Kingdom, mm. representatives to the United Kingdom, and between each other, each other shall also be High Commissioners. High Commissioners, yeah. I see. Uh, that's, that's a good point to understand and know, and thanks for clarifying that point, because uh, I always wondered the difference between a High Commissioner and an Ambassador basically, but you have explained it very clearly. Thank you. So, as I said, coming back to the UK, uh, the role of the High Commission and the High Commissioner in particular under your leadership, uh, could you explain, uh, perhaps on a government-to-government -government basis, G2G uh, -G basis, the role of the High Commissioner? Mm -hmm. um, First, I want to give a little bit of background about the relationship because sure. uh, being 
uh, Sri Lanka's last colonial power, the United Kingdom, mm. has been an influence in largely our administration, military, system of governance, uh, elect the election system, mm. the parliament. So mm. uh, if you consider that, we have had um, a great deal of influence from the United Kingdom. And as a result, we have connections spanning all these uh, areas mm. and beyond. Mm. And the people-to-people -people contact in this country is also a, a significant factor that contributes to our bilateral relations. So if you look at um, trade, for mm. example, it's, uh, we send 10% of our national exports to the United Kingdom. 10% of our 10 national exports. 10 of our total exports. Right. So it's about a billion dollars worth of trade, mostly exports. Annually? Annually, yes. Right. That's, that's a big number. Yes. And uh, every year, if it happens, then it's, it's compounding, so to speak. Yes. So it's something that we should always bear in mind uh, from an export standpoint. The United Kingdom, because we are no longer in the European Union, the UK, yeah. Uh, is a significant foreign exchange earner to Sri Lanka. And then, uh, in addition to the government-to-government -government links, yes. uh, how do you relate both the, high, the Office of the High Commission uh, here in London to the Sri Lankan community uh, within the United Kingdom and perhaps even in the Republic of Ireland mm -hmm. and, and other territories? Well, um, the United Kingdom is home to at least, I think, the, the guesstimate would be approximately half a million uh, people of Sri Lankan origin. Mm -hmm. That's first, second and third yeah. generation Sri Lankans. Yeah. Um, and the community is also a very strong community. I mean, largely professional mm. people who, who hold uh, who are held in very high esteem in this country. Hmm. So I think uh, it's a sense of pride for us. Uh, they're hardworking, good people who mm. are, you know, tax-paying, law-abiding people. And on top of that, they are very well connected to the motherland. So that is also a, a significant strength for the High Commission. That's good. That's good to hear. Yeah. So with, with the uh, coronavirus pandemic, the lockdown and the resulting, well, the, the consequences both here in the UK as well as in Sri Lanka. Uh, we have a paradoxical situation where in the UK mm -hmm. there are plenty of employment opportunities, yes. job opportunities. Yes. This is like 1970s United Kingdom where there were less unemployed, oversupply of jobs and uh, its history is repeating itself. So how can a country like Sri Lanka, where we have a huge human resource talent pool, mm -hmm. a resource pool, yes. how can we in Sri Lanka benefit from uh, the excess supply of jobs here? And what role can you play, as well as the High Commission play in merging or being the, the bridge? Well, um it's, it's significant that you mentioned that because we've worked since 2020 we, we, to take advantage of the uh, situation created by Brexit and mm. COVID. Uh, we signed a, an MOU uh, on healthcare cooperation with the UK in January 2022 uh, because healthcare, Sri Lanka, UK and healthcare is, a, is I think, something that has been linked up for decades. Yes. Um, it's... Uh, we have, I think, approximately 6,000 Sri Lankan trained doctors working within the NHS at present. NHS England. Uh, yes, yeah, NHS in the UK, England. Right. Yeah, okay. And uh, also the healthcare uh, corporation, MOU on healthcare corporation, enables us to actually uh, take advantage of, to be like a preferred partner, so to speak, to send nurses and caregivers mm. to the United Kingdom because these are classified as shortage professions. Mm. And as you said, you know, Sri Lanka has, is a country that has invested in its people for mm. at least seven and a half decades. Yes, yes uh, in Providing free health care, free education. So we have a, a resource pool that, can, that is not necessarily employed within its capacity. It's, it can be pushed upwards. So mm. there's an upskilling, mm. uh, huge opportunity for upskilling. Mm. 
So that's the healthcare sector, the yes. caregiving sector, etc. Yes. Are there other areas as yes, well? Yes, I think the other area would be there's a shortage in the hospitality uh, sector and also a uh, very uh, significant one is the, I think we saw uh, the, the results of the shortage in, in heavy vehicle, heavy goods vehicles. Yes, I remember that. Yes, yeah. yes. Mm. yes. So uh, at present there's about, uh, I think, over 5,000 positions in that field. So just, just to understand just myself, so there are about 5,000 uh, he heavy goods vehicle Vacancy. driver vacancies, vacancies. Yes. Uh, in, in, the, the UK. in the UK. And, and we have a lot of drivers in Sri Lanka, so how can you get them? <laughs> yes, we need, to, we need to get recognition of the heavy, uh, HGV license, or at least the ability for Sri Lankan uh, passenger vehicle license holders mm. to be able to sit uh, HGV uh, exam. So, yeah, because I know I have, a, I'm sure you have as well, a normal driving license, which is yeah. a passenger driving yes. license. To yeah. convert that into a heavy goods vehicle, a GV license, you need to do certain exams. exams. And there are separate them. exams in the UK, as and we have in Sri Lanka. Mm. And Sri Lanka also is the perhaps one of the very few labor exporting countries which has a two-tier driver's license system even for passenger vehicles. That's right. a theory and a practical. I see. So that is an advantage for us. Yeah. To, um, so we are in the process of discussing with the, um, the DVLA mm. here uh, to uh, see what, how we need to, what we need to improve upon to get our passenger vehicle license recognized in the UK. And for a reciprocity, for, a, for an exchange, rather. So this is work in progress at the moment? Yes, right. yes, it's work in pro progress. And our colleagues in the High Commission are working very hard on this because, oh, because it's, it's actually a new area. The whole employment portfolio is new. It's, it's only yes. a couple of years that we started this. Mm. And uh, there, there are various areas opening up as we go on. Mm. So it's, it's good for Sri Lanka to, to know this, to get to know the different opportunities mm. for Sri Lankans to take advantage. Absolutely, because once people come from Sri Lanka on sponsored jobs, yes. such as the healthcare sector, hospitality industry, yeah. now the heavy goods vehicle, HGV industry and various other sectors, uh, after a number of years, provided they have a clean record, etc., uh, sharing my professional knowledge on uh, some aspects of the law, they would uh, qualify to uh, a right to remain in the United Kingdom uh, and so on. So uh, that's an important breakthrough and uh, I'm, I'm so pleased to hear that, High Commissioner, because uh, uh, any opportunity to promote Sri Lankans, uh, especially in the European hemisphere, is, is a good thing because of the high salaries and yes. living standards, etc. And also it, it will contribute to enhancing our remittances because, I mean, that is something that the, the Sri Lankan economy depends on, mm. remittances. Mm. And also not just the money coming in, the exchange of ideas, the exchange of systems. I mean, the healthcare sector is an example of this where we've had a long history of doctors coming here and then go, returning to Sri Lanka to work. Mm. So that is where we have um, actually applied some of the systems of the UK in Sri Lanka, because if you look at our primary healthcare sector, I mean, it's, it's, it's really quite exemplary for a country yes. of that income level. Mm. And it's also, like in the UK, it's free at the point of uh, receipt yes. or, or this, of the patients uh, receiving the service from yes. the medical professionals. That's, that's an important aspect, I think, uh, worth uh, understanding and further exploration. So keep watching. Uh, the government uh, websites and so on on employment opportunities, especially the HGV sector. Yeah. So you have, for example, in the High Commission, uh, a consular division, yes. a trade and tourism, yeah. and uh, is it education and culture? Education, so, culture, mm. employment. Now. Employment. Yes. Yeah, employment now. And the political section as which is very, also very important because the United Kingdom and Sri Lanka share very long history mm. and political relations, um, the ex regular exchange of high level visits, mm. as you would have seen, um, the President uh, Rana Rukmasinghe visited the United Kingdom to attend uh, the late Majesty's funeral mm. and uh, because it's, it is, she was also the head of state mm. of Ceylon uh, for 20 years post-independence. Post-independence. So, um, and, and significantly post-independent 
uh, the nation's longest serving head of state. Absolutely. I could see a, a, a photograph of the late Queen and your good self there. What's that? Well, that is the presentation of credentials. Credentials? Yes. Can you explain what, what it means? Credentials are the papers that accredit a uh, head of mission as the representative of the head of state of the sending country. So Sri Lanka's head of state's credentials are yeah. handed over uh, to, her, to the head of state of the receiving state. So I at see. that time, it was obviously Queen Elizabeth II. Right. And uh, I had um, the good fortune of actually being the very last head of mission to present credentials in person to Her Majesty, because afterwards there we had COVID and mm, mm. then um, Her Majesty went online. Yes. Oh, I see, online. Yes. Right, yes. right. So you have the distinction of being the last uh, yes. High Commissioner uh, to present Sri Lanka's credentials or from the President of the Sri Lanka, Republic of Sri Lanka to Her Majesty, yes. uh, the head of uh, the court of St. James's as Absolutely. the official saying goes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I see. So since then it has been, it was done with COVID uh, online. Yes. And of course, uh, this was at Buckingham Palace? Or? This was at Buckingham Palace, mm. yes. Mm. Um, and since then, um, Her Majesty uh, sat at uh, Windsor Castle yes. and the ambassadors or head, um, and high commissioners would be taken to Buckingham Palace mm. and then they'd meet online. So ah, that, that's how it was done. Right, um, right. It's an interesting... which was which was also very cool. But uh, yeah. I think I think I'm happy. I was uh, yeah. I, I was able to uh, meet uh, Her Majesty in person because it was very significant for me. No, it's absolutely fascinating and a historical event, certainly for you, uh, for the rest of your not just your professional life, but uh, life going forward. Uh, the audience and especially being the last uh, High Commissioner to. Uh, meet the Queen in person. Uh, I could see a book underneath called Sri Lanka Gems, but just highlighting the fact that I think one of the blue sapphires uh, on the Queen's crown. Um, no, actually, that... it's, it's the, it's the uh, engagement ring oh, the of engagement ring. Um, late Diana, P Princess of Wales, right. and which is now, which adorns the current Princess of Wales as well, mm -hmm. you know, so it's the engagement ring, uh, which has a Ceylon sapphire. Ceylon sapphire, that's yeah. right. Fascinating, that is, yeah. So, um, I think it's important uh, that we discussed about you and uh, the foreign service, as for especially for young people, children, uh, young students uh, wanting to join. And then you have given us a very good explanation or a description of what the High Commissioner and the High Commission does here. Yes. Uh, and then the Sri Lankan community, the links and so on. I also know that you are also uh, the patron of a number of Sri Lankan associations and organizations here. Yes. Uh, to name a few, uh, the Association of Professional Sri Lankans in mm -hmm. the UK, PSL, I think the medical as well as doctors, various associations yes. and other religious as well as non-religious associations. Yes. Um, as I said before, uh, Sri Lankans, uh, despite living in the United Kingdom for even more than one or two generations, mm. still maintain that close connectivity with the country. Mm. We have here at least 32 past pupils associations, uh, perhaps more. 32 right. is, comes to mind because of the Festival of Cricket. The Festival of Cricket, yeah. And the professional organizations, the APSL, which works really closely with the High Commission. We engage uh, with a lot of each other's activities. Mm and the professional, individual professional bodies, like the doctors, the lawyers, the engineers, and so on. Mm. So these are, I mean, these associations are emblematic of our community, the fact that there are a lot, large number of professional Sri Lankans living in the United Kingdom, mm. and the work, the kind of work they do, not just in the UK, but also in Sri Lanka, especially at, at, at times of need, you know. Uh, it's, and I, th I find that completely touching because uh, even before, I mean, sometimes a High Commission cannot launch an appeal without uh, mm. receiving instructions, mm. but it's the community that comes to us. The associations mm. come to us, mm. say, we heard from mm. our colleagues in such and such 
professional uh, either in the medical field or the engineering field if it's if it's a flood mm. or, or or a tsunami uh, or covid mm. they come to us and this is precisely what they need and we know already and mm. we've collected this can you help us send it back and this is the kind of support that we appreciate because mm. we provide consumer services we engage with the community uh, on on various activities in in terms of events but this support mm. is invaluable I mean, it's so touching to mm. think that, you know, we, they found out already. They, mm. they, they find out through their contacts, their colleagues, and they just want to help. Mm. And even when, especially when the government, just after we uh, hit the COVID uh, crippled the national economy, and we launched the special deposit accounts, the, the central bank gave uh, an additional 2% um, interest over what the banks were already giving for a special deposits right. in foreign currency in Sri Lanka. And, and, it, and, and I know everyone came forward. Mm. And I mean, I don't know the figures exactly, but I know significant amounts of so money was sent back. The community, as well as the associations, various bodies uh, rallied round and came uh, forward. And uh, when, it, when Sri Lanka was in need uh, of foreign currency, as well as other services yes. and so on. Yes, it's, it's, it's just that fact that people feel for Sri Lanka. Mm. And I always say you can, you can take the Sri Lankan out of Sri Lanka, but not Sri Lanka out of the Sri Lankan. So that's... Uh, that's very true. That's yes. very true. Yes. And it, 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 it's, it's happening not just with the first generation of Sri Lankans, to a lesser degree, no doubt, with the second and third generation Sri Lankans. But yes. uh, I think the identity of being from Sri Lanka with Sri Lankan origins, that will remain for a long time. Yes. Uh, and, and I think it's, it's, not, it's not on the wane for the next generation, because if you look at the Sapphire Bowl, the mm -hmm. uh, uh, Sri Lankan Association of Imperial uh, College. And College, yeah. Yes, uh, they, the, I think the ball grows every year. Mm. And these are all mostly young mm. people who were born and raised here. Mm. So uh, the fact that they bring Sri Lankan pop stars and they also support Sri Lankan charities mm. uh, is, is significant for Sri Lanka. I mean, this is our wealth. Mm. This, the, the human resources and their uh, next generation is, is such a, a, an asset for Sri Lanka. I think that that's an important point you highlighted, High Commissioner, because uh, from a Sri Lankan, a narrow Sri Lankan sense, we think it's tea, rubber, coconut, and perhaps the tourism sector uh, that brings us the foreign currency and also employment uh, aspects or prospects rather in the Middle East. But uh, you've sort of highlighted and explained in detail uh, how the overall aspects outside of the traditional sectors, uh, including human resource capital, mm -hmm. can be uh, harnessed in the UK for the benefit of Sri Lanka and also improving themselves as families and yeah. individuals. And image building for the country. I mean, um, you, can, you can hire agencies to, to, to do this kind of work, but mm. The, the word of mouth and the, the actual person uh, being there. I mean, for example, um, the Princess of Wales mm. uh, had apparently a nanny when she was living in Jordan, right. who was a Sri Lankan. Oh, so it's, it's um, fascinating. This is, I mean, this is, uh, and the fact, I mean, this was related to me in a conversation, mm. and the, the, the fact that she, rem she was told this, obviously she would have been a baby, mm. but she said she, that she was fed spicy food at breakfast. <laughs> so, I mean, this is, these are the ambassadors of our nation. Mm. We are the official ambassadors, but every single Sri Lankan that sets foot outside of the country is an ambassador. And I think most of, most of the Sri Lankans do that yeah. really well. Another area of interest, mutual interest, for both the United Kingdom and Sri Lanka, possibly, is cricket. We are both test playing nations. Um, you meet, obviously, as the High Commissioner, wherever a team from Sri Lanka arrives here. Uh, and then also there are a number of Sri Lankan players working here on contract at overseas players and so on. Could you give us a little bit about what you know on the Sri Lankan cricket aspects and the connection to the UK cricket? Yes, um, cricket obviously was a, a colonial um, remnant which we have perhaps bettered 
and uh, taken to make it a popular game in, yes. in the subcontinent, not mm. just Sri Lanka, but India and Pakistan as well. It's mm. almost like a common religion mm. uh, in our part of the world. And, and from the UK's point of view, that is the fact that we have retained their legacy, mm. to speak, and bettered it is significant. So that's, Th that's important, we bettered it. Yes, yeah. Yeah. yes. Okay. And, and also the, the spectators, mm. the Barmy army never fails to visit Sri Lanka. Back, and yeah. sometimes, sometimes even when it's, the game is played in neighboring countries, they prefer to sit in Sri Lankan hotels and watch the game if, if they're unable to get to that country. Uh, so, uh, uh, to, to watch the game in, in Sri Lanka. So that's an opportunity for tourism. Absolutely. Well. And that's, that's perhaps the reason that uh, the UK is the second source of inbound tourism to Sri Lanka. Sometimes third, sometimes second. We would like it to be the first. But, uh, and I hope that now we've had the absence of tourism for three years, which is significant on the Sri Lankan economy. We mm. had a bad year in 2019 with the sure. Easter bombings and two years of COVID. Mm. So 2022 has to be the game changer for us. So that's, that's really good to hear because I started off on cricket with, with our colonial links and the histories or history of the game. But linking it to tourism, Talking of tourism, there are a number of types of tourists, categories of tourists. Yes. Uh, so generally the European tourist is a high spending tourist, but equally you get the backpackers onwards. Yeah. I think Sri Lanka welcomes everyone. Everyone. Yeah. It's, it's, Sri Lanka has something to offer mm. to every kind of tourist and every age group. I mean, whether you're a, a family with, with, with children because you have multiple different activities and uh, even for the elderly, wellness tourism, which, mm. is, which, is, which has grown significantly, especially during the time of COVID, where people started paying more attention to themselves and uh, what you say, the sixth sense, mm. the wellness, wellness. tourism. Yeah. So the these Ayurveda are based. Ayurveda and, and sports, of course, water sports. We've developed the infrastructure for that in Sri Lanka. And now, of course, with the economic challenges we're facing, the affordability. Mm. Um, I read somewhere that Sri Lanka can offer you uh, a six-star holiday on a three-star budget. So I think that given that the economic uh, challenges the United Kingdom is facing as well, mm. with inflation and um, the rise in, in energy prices, etc., mm. uh, we offer a very good um, winter option. Winter option, absolutely. Now... Cricket to tourism and the opportunities for tourism, including foreign direct investments. Yes. I think there is another link. I'm sort of, I hope I'm not imagining things here. But, no, uh, not at all. Because, because again, the comfort mm. that British people feel in Sri Lanka, familiar systems, legal systems, administrative systems. And um, I think another thing we don't quite appreciate as Sri Lankans is the the livability factor of a city like Colombo. Mm. Because if you compare it with neighboring cities, with the exception of Singapore and Dubai, mm. Colombo offers the, most, the highest livability factor yes. uh, in all, all that neighborhood. And, and, and so for investments and, and long-term tourism, this is, this is a very, uh, it's a significant deciding point because people invest for a number of reasons. Of course, another, other countries will also offer competitive land prices and, and energy, etc. cetera, but, and, and, or, or tax holidays. But at the same time, you, when you house your employees, when you house your top management, they also need to have good schools, good hospitals, and a good livability factor. Clean um, air. Absolutely, yeah. clean air. And that's, that's a very uh, uh, a point or a, a facility or a natural facility that we can we have continued to maintain yes. in comparison to other South Asian countries. South and Southeast Asia, South because East Sri Asia. Lanka is a very climate conscious country, mm. climate conscious society. Mm. I mean, people, it's, it's Colombo well before we became more affluent, mm. uh, was always considered a clean city. Yes, yes. I mean, we may not have had a lot uh, even since the 70s and 80s, but mm. it was always a clean city. Mm. And th these are factors that you cannot change overnight. You cannot grow them overnight. These are mm. habits. These are people's lifestyles. So this is Sri Lanka. And, and I think we have, apart from the monetary advantages of investing, the locational, the geographical advantages, the connectivity, logistics, 
the livability factor is also a huge contributory factor for attracting investments. That's really fascinating to uh, start the link, having started the link from cricket to investment. Uh, so uh, just going back to a point, uh, something you mentioned previously a few minutes ago, uh, this was about the Sri Lankan community in the UK, which is with all the generations included around 500,000, which is a, a, a big number. Um, now, most of them could well be British citizens. Some of them would be dual citizens and some who may still be holding on to their motherland passports, Sri Lanka's passports with permanent residency. So they have to whether they are going to Sri Lanka on holiday, on a foreign passport, or if you are a Sri Lankan passport holder, uh, they will be interacting with uh, the High Commission's Consular Division. Mm -hmm. I would like to understand what the Consular Division does and uh, their availability both in person and online and so on, High Commissioner. Yes, we have a large consular section because this mission is actually the um, service is the largest number of people by a single mission. Because if you take Italy, they have two missions and Australia has more than one mission, mm. and so on. So the UK, this is the only mission for the United Kingdom and, and also for Ireland. So, right. so um, we actually see about 50 people a day. Mm -hmm. um, we had gone down a little bit during COVID because we had to space out our appointments, but we, the online system that we introduced remains because it's easy for people to actually book their appointments online and, and know when they have to come into the High Commission for their work. So we do all from ranging from the issuance of birth certificates and uh, certification of documents of the gov issued by the government of Sri Lanka to renewals of passports and the processing of dual nationality um, and wide-ranging services. And as we did the online system, appointment system, we realized that the online appointments were booked well in advance for months. So then we thought, okay, perhaps we need to add another day to the calendar. Yeah. Yeah. So that's when we opened, started opening on Saturdays. I see. So we have conduct a full consular service on Saturdays. And from what time to what time? From uh, Usually we, we close our consular service early because we have to bank the yes, money yeah. on the day. So yeah. uh, for the first half of the day, uh, we have consular appointments. Yeah. And, and all consular officers of all the embassies and high commissions, they, they shut at a certain point in time for banking yes. purposes around 1.32. So that's yes. not just unique to the Sri no, Lankan no. High Commission. No. All consular uh, em embassies are the same. So that's, that's an important point uh, where the consular, I suppose in an immediate way, uh, the consular office, which is housed here in uh, 13 Hyde Park Gardens in London, uh, is the, the, the interface where public actually see the workings yes. uh, uh, of the High Commission. Yes, because um, that's their day-to-day -day interaction point with the High Commission. And, and I must say, it's, it's quite encouraging to receive um, letters from the public thanking us sometimes, which is, which is actually encouraging to our colleagues who work in the consular mm. division, because now they're giving up their Saturdays as well um, to, to help our people. Because there are pensioners, you know, sometimes we pay pensions. Yes. And, and the pensioners uh, sometimes have to present themselves in order to, to uh, what we call to uh, ascertain their, their, you know, that they exist. So mm. they have to be accompanied by a, 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 the next generation who yes. perhaps have to take a day off to bring yes. their parent to the consular division. So they, for these, to facilitate this, mm. this, we thought, okay, Saturday would be good. And also for the students. I mean, students are in class from Monday to Friday. Mm. We have a large number of students here. So, and sometimes they are not all based in, well, not sometimes, they are not always based in London, so mm. they had to travel from another city. Mm. So to facilitate this, and they, can, they don't have to miss classes, they can come on a Saturday. Mm. That's very good to hear, that's that information, because it, it makes the, the High Commission more close and accessible to, uh, to the general public uh, who want to use the services. Yes, because this is, this is the second home of, of or the home of the uh, people of Sri Lankan origin, the Indeed. connection to, to uh, their, their motherland. And we like to keep it open and accessible to them. 
Very good. Thank you very much. That's really fascinating, uh, High Commissioner, um, giving a, a, a to E said a 360-degree view of uh, what happens here uh, at the Sri Lankan High Commission um, for us all as viewers. Uh, I really appreciate you taking time off your busy schedule today to share 30 or 40 minutes with us uh, for the benefit of our viewers primarily in the UK as well as in Sri Lanka, the opportunities, etc. So thank you again, High Commissioner Saroja Sirisena. Thank, thank you, you for having me, Rohan. Thank you and thank goodbye. You.